What's up, YouTube? Yeah, so I made that video about how I was gonna, uh, try making stuff again. Uh, I released that right before my company did, like, a big Kickstarter. Uh, that took up, like, a solid two months of my time, like, pretty non-stop. And then I got sick immediately after that. Uh, I still got a little bit in my throat. But, outside of that, I'm feeling great. So I thought, you know what? Let's do something fun. We're gonna look at everything I played last year. The Steam replay is a good thing for this. I think I'm gonna look at that. I'm also gonna look at my, like, Nintendo Rewind thing that they sent. I remember a lot of stuff, but I, I imagine there's probably some things that I completely forgot that I played last year. Hopefully, I'm gonna still feel good enough talking all this time. I'm get There's a weird stuff happening. Uh, throat and sinus. Uh, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look. Uh, put a lot of stuff. Yeah, this, uh, this, this, this tracks for me. Final Fantasy XIV, I've been playing since, uh... 2014? Something like that? When did it come out? I've been playing it a long time. I've been playing it since before the first expansion. I wasn't there at launch. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I play a lot of this every year. I'm actually really curious to see when most of the playtime was, because the thing with fourteen is I'll go through, uh, periods of playing it, like, every day, and sometimes doing, like, eight-hour sessions. Uh, and then I won't touch it for a couple months, uh, you know? So, uh, very curious to see how that breaks down. Played it, apparently, 163 sessions, so a little under uh, half of the days of the year. 48 games played total, 34 of them new. I do not remember playing 48 games last year, uh, so I'm intensely curious to see <laughs> what I've forgotten about. Persona 4 uh, made a big deal. I played that uh, when I got my Steam Deck. Oh, that's another thing. The Steam Deck, phenomenal console, uh, first off. I absolutely love the Steam Deck. It heavily affected what I wound up playing, because uh, there was st I was able to play on the plane, I was able to play uh, while I was away for conventions uh, at night and stuff like that. Um, I, I played through a lot of indie games that had been on my list that I never got around to, because they worked particularly well on the Steam Deck, and I just had the ability to play it in bed or whatever. Persona 4, I actually started before I had the Steam Deck, uh, but then the majority of my playtime moved over to the Steam Deck once I got it. And yeah, we'll talk about Persona 4 uh, a bit later, because I, I have some thoughts on that. Uh, but yeah, 765 achievements, Jesus Christ. Uh, Gundam Evolution. Hey, that's a, that's a good game. I keep looking over here, my webcam's here. Gundam Evolution is a good game. Uh... I'm very excited to... I've still been playing it this year, too. And I'm sure that it is going to not exist uh, next year, because the player base is simply not large enough. 81% with keyboard and mouse. 19% uh, with controller. I'm assuming most of that 19% is going to be Steam Deck, because I'm pretty sure that counts as controller. So there's some games that I do just play on here. Like, I don't play 14 on the Steam Deck. Even though that is uh, controller optimized. Um, I learned playing it on mouse and keyboard, and I feel like changing over would be very difficult. Well, this is generally sad. I played a game on Steam 37... I, I think I know exactly when that was, actually. Percentage of games you played were new releases. 23%? That, that actually surprises me. Uh, I was convinced that uh, mostly what I was playing was older games that I was finally getting around to. A quarter of them being new games actually surprises me. 71% though, being something from the last seven years, but not 2022, makes a ton of sense. Like I said, I got through a lot of indies uh, last year. 6% uh, classic games. I'm really curious what those even are. Apparently I play under the rate of classic. Oh, if they count anything eight or eight years or older classic, that makes sense. Here's a question. Final Fantasy XIV, is that over eight years old now? What do they count that as? Is that going to count as a classic if it goes over eight years, even though they're still putting new content in? You already play. MMORPG, that is entirely Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, Metroidvania... How many Metroidvanias did I play? I didn't play Hollow Knight, that's still on my list. I guess Death's Door? <laughs> emotional. That makes a lot of sense. The fact that I played more Metroidvania than Emotional actually surprises me. The fact that I played this much Souls-like also surprises me. Why is Cats a category? I'm assuming that's only Stray. Roguelike deck builder that has to just be Slay the Spire. I don't think I played any roguelike deck builders that weren't Slay the Spire, but I did play a good amount of Slay the Spire in a very short amount of time. Yeah, no, this makes sense. Okay, so here's the two major reasons. Here's the two major reasons 
why I had these big spikes in playtime. This? It's because of Endwalker. Uh, Endwalker uh, last expansion came out in like December 2021. So I'm sure if we had a replay for 2021, you would see a massive spike in hours, specifically uh, <laughs> specifically in December when that expansion dropped. And then this was me playing through the rest of that expansion and all the content there. Uh, I did all the story before Christmas because I made a big deal out of like, I need to finish the story of the expansion before I go home for Christmas and don't play for like two weeks. Uh, so I mainlined like the, the main scenario of, uh, of Endwalker, all in December. And then all this is just... Uh, all the other side content that came out with it. I uh, started trailing off. Didn't play in May. Played a little bit in June, apparently. But yeah, over the summer, didn't play as much. Uh, August. Yeah. Uh, I don't know one reason why I got back into it. That's when I started uh, dating my girlfriend, who also plays 14. Uh, so... There you go. December and January and February. That would have dropped off a lot because that was when we went into Kickstarter crunch. It's when it was super, super busy and just did not have a lot of time to play games anymore. When I did play games, it would have been like in my bed at night on the Steam Deck. Persona 4. Yep, there it is. <laughs> June, Message July, August. This is genuinely just when I played straight through it. Uh, including playing some of it in Indianapolis when I was at Gen Con uh, on the Steam Deck. Because I think I got... Oh, maybe I actually did most of this before the Steam Deck. But I did play a good amount of it on the Steam Deck. I think I got my Steam Deck in July. I was very excited to play Persona 4. I had started playing it on the PlayStation 2 in, like, 2013. Something like that. Uh, and then my living situation changed. And I did not have a TV to play games on anymore. Uh, so for, like, a year, I didn't play it. And I was, like, 20, 30 hours in at that point. And so then, when I did get the ability to play it again, I was like, oh, I'll need to start it over again. But then that's so much time. Last year, I finally decided, no, I'm just going to play it. I like the gameplay a whole lot. I was actually very disappointed in the story. <laughs> the story starts off super strong. But like, it was very weird, because it, it has this tone of uh, being like very rebellious and very counterculture. Uh, and then the resolution to almost all of it is like, hey... You kids just need to stop being so troublesome and rebellious and just, uh... You just kind of fulfill your role in society. Uh, that wasn't great. There's a lot of good moment-to-moment -moment character interaction writing. Uh, also, half your party just, like, loves doing casual sexual harassment and assault. Uh, so there's a, there was just, like, a lot of, like, very uncomfortable scenes. I guess spoilers for Persona 4. You've got this guy, his, his, his inciting incident is, oh god, am I gay? Do I have feelings for another man? Oh no. You go into a dungeon that is just all like him being afraid of that and him like being like very lispy and like a, a huge like stereotype of, of a gay man. Uh, and it's like, okay, this is interesting. They're taking a real big swing. They're playing with heavy material. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what they do with it. What they do with it is, don't worry, dude, you're not actually gay. You just have some feminine tendencies, and that's fine. Uh, it doesn't mean you're gay, which would be bad. Which I don't think is actually that progressive. And then for the rest of the game, your best friend is just constantly making jokes that are like, hey, 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 don't leave that guy alone with us. I don't know what he's going to try to do to us. It just leans very hard into uh, being gay being a bad thing. Not just being a punchline, but also, like, it's a punchline because they're inherently bad people. Uh, that's not great. And then there's the way they handle uh, trans issues, which is worse. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, I need to get into that here. But I played all the way through. Love the gameplay. Writing, honestly, the back half of the writing really fell off for me. Not even in, like, the politics of it, but in the, uh, huh, we kind of stopped having interesting characters and just evolve into a very cliche like big end of the world calamity thing it starts leaning very much into uh the plot over character uh camp and the plot's not particularly interesting or well done i was kind of disappointed with like what the answer to the big mystery of the town was uh just kind of very cliche and 
unfortunate given how strong it feels like the thing starts off. That said, uh, I got a lot of achievements because I, uh, I love the gameplay, like, a lot. Uh, so, did a lot of completing things, did, like, all the social links maxed out. It's, it's, in a lot of ways, it's my kind of game. Uh, just wish the writing was better. Gundam Evolution. Hey. This game's a lot of fun. Started off playing it with friends, but I also, like, kept playing it, uh, myself. I think it launched near the end of September, so then I, you know, October was, like, the bulk of the playtime. If you don't enjoy hero shooters, uh, and you don't like Gundam, there's not much here for you. I personally find it really enjoyable. I like that you're not hard-locked into roles, uh, the way that you are with Overwatch, necessarily. Uh, which, oh, I guess I should mention Overwatch. I uninstalled Overwatch 2 after the first season. As somebody for whom Overwatch was very important for a long time, uh, it's, it just was not fun anymore. Gundam Evolution, very mindless, fun. I like Methus. I like uh, a lot of them, honestly. Gun Tank is a lot of fun. Uh, just a fun game to pick up and uh, play while you're listening to things uh, or watching things. Problem is, very low player base uh, in the West. It can take a long time to get matches. Ranked is completely dead uh, in the West. And uh, that's a bummer. It's kind of like Battleborn, where I feel like it's a very good game that is going to die just because it doesn't have a player base. Okay, Rogue Legacy 2. I was absolutely obsessed with. I actually want to see my full hours on this. Um, I was playing basically nothing but this for a considerable amount of time. Uh, and then I stopped. I think I just hit my wall with playing the same game over and over again to the point where it was like, yeah, I burned myself out on it. Uh, I did several, like, new game pluses on it, as you do. If you played Rogue Legacy, you know how it goes. So I did a couple of, like, the advanced prestige iterations, or whatever you want to call it. Good game. It's just the first one, but better. If you like roguelikes, it, this is, like, the gold standard. Genuinely. Very, very good game. Right, Final Fantasy IV! So there are only a couple Final Fantasies I haven't played. This was, uh, one of them. Uh, then I think it's 5, 8, and 12, and I also played 12. I think I played through all of 12 this year, though, so it won't be on this list. Uh, so the only ones I have left are 5 and 8 to actually play through, and I've played 8, but I've never beaten it. My sinuses are just getting worse over the recording of this. That's really unfortunate. The thing that I really liked about Final Fantasy IV, uh, it was fun to play it and see where so much of Final Fantasy XIV's ideas came from. Basically, the whole last expansion was borrowing things from Final Fantasy IV. Uh, and I didn't know that. I played through that whole thing not knowing that the, the rabbit people are from IV. Uh, the whole moon plot is basically from IV. A lot of the locations, like, so much of it is just IV. As far as writing goes, this is before the days where Final Fantasy was really doing, like, a ton of interesting stuff with the story. So, some of the characters are fun, uh, but I wouldn't say the, the story is actually anything to write home about. Uh, necessarily. And the gameplay is fairly decent. If you like classic, like, JRPG turn-based stuff, it's a really good example of that. Uh, it's got a lot of fun stuff to find and complete and all that. At the end of the day, I don't know that I would say this is an absolutely tremendous example of the genre or anything. Um, it was very good, and I enjoyed playing it. I don't know that I took anything away from it uh, that is necessarily, like, uh, gonna stick with me all that much okay so those are the those are the big ones that they're making a big deal out of playtime by month oh this breaks it down like what game it was i played ftl spirit fairer wait did i stream spirit fairer entirely oh i did wow how is spirit fairer not on here so yeah the stuff that i streamed is a big deal spirit fairer messed me up uh i 100 of it uh was got very into it I'm not entirely sure it was the best stream game, uh, but I did stream all of it. You can actually see that whole playthrough uh, on my stream archive channel, if that's something you're into. That was a very cute game. They did what they were going for very well. Uh, it's very calming and relaxing and emotionally devastating. Uh, so cool. FTL I just like a lot. Oh, I did play like the first couple levels of Wargroove and I wasn't really feeling it. Looking for that... Uh, Looking for that Fire Emblem fix, 
Uh, it didn't really get it from Wargroove. Uh, I guess it's, it's closer to Advanced Wars than it is Fire Emblem. Uh, just wasn't feeling it as much. Maybe someday. I, I do want to really get into it at some point. Maybe someday. Kingsway... It was alright. Star Renegades is a very good... Uh, very good roguelike as well. I really liked Star Renegades, actually. Oh, these are the different bits. Okay, cool. Raft, I like a lot. Outer Wilds. <sighs> I love Outer Wilds. I'm a big baby. Uh, the DLC starts off with giving you an option to turn it on smaller frights. They're like, hey, there's some really scary stuff in this. Uh, and I know what was scary in the initial game. And I dealt with it. I was, I was really tense. The fact that they're warning me there's something scary in the DLC scares me more than the actual stuff probably would. Uh, and so I have just like... I didn't put it on, on lowered frights because I want the real experience, but I think I got to the part in the DLC where they're gonna scare me, and I just couldn't get myself to do it. <laughs> and so I just stopped. I absolutely adore the game, though, like, I, I, I love puzzle games, and it's, it's a stellar example of so many things. Everything Outer Wilds does, it does absolutely perfectly. If you have not played it, I don't want to tell you anything about it. Um, it's not actually that scary. I'm just a big baby. Uh, and it has that thing where a lot of things just are inherently more tense, dangerous situations are inherently more tense when you're in the first person. If you, in any way, like indie games that try new things, uh, like puzzle games, like space, please try out Outer Wilds. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time. Raft? Shout out Raft. Uh, they finally finished a story, and I've been playing that through with uh, uh, some of my friends. Raft is phenomenal. Uh, Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. That's an interesting indie game. There is some unfortunate bugginess to it. Uh, I had a couple things glitch out, which wasn't great. Uh, it's a game you're just walking across the country, uh, seeing how stories evolve over time. It's not terribly long. Uh, I 100%ed it, because I'm an idiot. I really enjoyed seeing it for what it was. I don't think it's for everybody, but I did like it quite a bit. Among Us played that uh, on stream with Perry and friends a couple times, I think, throughout the year. He does that every now and then. I love playing with that group. That group is just a lot of fun. Uh, very wholesomely chaotic. Chaotic in a way that I actually enjoy. If you see uh, if you see Among Us here and there, it's probably Perry streamed it that month, and, uh, and I jumped in. Uh, Perry Dactyl on Twitch and YouTube. Check him out. Super nice guy. Phenomenal dude. Super liminal. Uh, that was a really fun Stanley Parable style walking simulator puzzle game situation. Uh, only a couple hours long. The writing was pretty well done. It wasn't breaking entirely new ground, but what they did, they did pretty effectively. It's got a good sense of humor to it. Uh, the, pu uh, the puzzles weren't like intensely difficult. Uh, but they still made me feel good when I solved them. If you look it up and you think it looks interesting, they do what they show in the trailer really well. So, if the trailer looks interesting to you, I'd recommend it. Yeah, there's a lot of games in here that I completely forgot about. Oh god, this is when I started streaming Dark Souls 2. I don't know if I'm gonna finish that. I don't like Dark Souls 2 very much. I decided I wanted to play through the entire Souls series so I can eventually play Elden Ring. I streamed Dark Souls 1 like five years ago, and I adored it. I, I like the original Dark Souls a lot. Dark Souls 2, I just feel bullshitted way too often. Uh, it doesn't feel great. And I'm just missing kind of the, the, the hooks that really pulled me through Dark Souls 1. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna push myself through it. I, I gotta, so that I can get to 3, well, I'm Bloodborne and Sekiro, and then Elden Ring. PUBG? Oh god, I picked up PUBG again for a little bit, just out of curiosity to see what it was like. I put, like, 100 hours into PUBG over the course of a month, uh, playing with friends. That, uh, that was all I would do, was would play it for, like, 5-6 hours a night, uh, when it first dropped. It's not as fun to get into anymore. I was hoping that the magic would come back, because I would have loved to have those nights of getting in a call with three friends and just doing, like, the chaos of PUBG. Like, that's one of my favorite, like, gaming times ever. And uh, I was really hoping to get it back. It didn't quite work out. Mana Moore. It's very interesting. Hey, I should make a video about Moon at some point. Moon RPG. 
It's the same studio that made Moon, or at least the same, like, creative direction. Monomore is a very fun, weird, arcadey game that's very easy to pick up for a bit. It's a very cheap, it's a very fun way to uh, to kill a little bit of time. I do like Monomore quite a bit. Star Renegades, again, um, really love uh, Star Renegades. It's a turn-based, roguelike, party builder uh, situation. Uh, it has a lot of, like, my personal favorite stuff. Uh, in games, so I really enjoy it. Dandy Dungeon, same as same as Monomore, similar thing. I hit a wall in it after a while. It was a mobile game, uh, and you hit the point where it's like, ah, this is where on the mobile game they wanted you to spend money, uh, and it just gets it gets rough. Uh, but it's very funny and weird. I did enjoy it a good amount. Core Keeper, Core Keeper is so good. Core Keeper is so goddamn good. Multiplayer with friends, kind of makes a Stardew with. Uh, I guess more of an action game, Moonlighter, kind of, I guess. Phenomenally fun, well-designed. I think it's still early access, but it's already good and worth playing. Super, super, super recommend that game. I want to play more of it. Uh, getting the group together to play it has been difficult, but I, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> and then Rogue Legacy happened. Jesus Christ. Then Rogue Legacy happened. What are the other games that I did boot up? Wildermyth! Oh, Wildermyth! Wildermyth slaps. Wildermyth is uh, also a roguelike. Uh, it is the closest a game has gotten to feeling like um, feeling like D&D to me. There's a lot of games uh, that say they're trying to do D&D, but even Baldur's Gate 3 does not feel as much like D&D to me. I don't know. There's all these games that like show the dice and everything. They're like, oh, look, see, it's like D&D. &D. Uh, but it's not really. I, I, don't, I feel like it's a different thing. Wildermyth captures it very well. Uh, everything's procedurally generated, although you can choose to actually custom make your party and actually name them and decide what they are and all that. I tend to start with just like a random group, uh, and they have modules, basically, the way that you would play uh, a, a published adventure in 5e or whatever. Uh, you can pick a module, and but you're doing that module with this random group of characters, and you, so you've got a map and you've got objectives you have to complete, but every time you move anywhere, they're rolling dice to like see like there's a random event trigger and so there's all these side quests that are completely different and can lead to like lasting effects on your characters and so you're building up like the fables of these characters uh by chance by your decisions uh you'll be you'll sometimes be given like a decision to make where it'll go like cool here's three ways you can handle the situation um and then relevant to the stats of this character who's making the decision these are their percent chances and there's consequences for failure uh, you can decide whether a character dies or whether they just like retreat and sustain a wound uh, if they if they get hurt. You build up like the legends of these characters in a way that feels very natural and very very much like what happens with uh, like a homebrew D and D campaign. It's the only game I've found that really captures that vibe. I've been playing it again recently, and that, that, uh, it's another game like I'll go in and I'll like play through a module every now and then. Uh, so I won't play it for a long time, then I'll go and I'll just, like, play through an adventure. And, like, those will take, like, a couple hours to complete. Uh, but I built up a couple, like... I've gotten a couple characters to the point where they're, like, legacy characters. Uh, where I then is able to, was able to, like, save them and go, like, yeah, these are now, like, legends in the world. Uh, it's it's just very cool. I, I, I love Wildermyth a whole lot. And, it, and that's generally, like, a case of, like, an indie team that, like, could use support. Like, check it out. Play. If any of this sounds remotely interesting to you, please check out Wildermyth. Vampire Survivors. That's what the pink is. Ah, uh, man. I 100%ed Vampire Survivors as soon as I started playing it. Everybody started freaking out about it. And yeah, um, it's worth it. it it's, it's, if, if this is your kind of game, boy, is it extremely that kind of game. 100%ed all the stuff that was in it. They've added a bunch since then, so I'm no longer at 100%, but I have not picked it back up because I need to do things with my time. Still played Rogue Legacy for a bit. Persona 4. I was playing a lot of roguelites at this time. Vampire Survivors, Rogue Legacy, Wildermyth, Star Renegades was like also still happening every now and then around that time, I'm pretty sure. Started streaming Mirror's Edge Catalyst too. I need to get back to streaming that. I stopped streaming after the summer. I just kind of burned out and I got too busy with work stuff. I want to get back into it. I wanted to stream. Since we wrapped up this Kickstarter, I've been on break over the last week. So I wanted to stream, but I've just been like really sick. I'm still getting over it. It's, it's killing me. I've been sick for like a week and a half. Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Good game. 
dare I say, an improvement on the first? Movement-wise, it is. It's a very different game than the first. It's hard to compare them. Uh, Raft, Fall Guys, Sea of Thieves. I really want to play Sea of Thieves again, but I need friends that will play with me, like, regularly. There's too many games I have that are, like, I need a bunch of friends to play it, and I can only get them to do one of these at a time. Shout out to the Raft, though. Raft is extremely good. Also has some random generated stuff to it, but you're following, like, a story and all that. The story has just been getting better and better. The stuff they added in the last expansion, th those islands are phenomenal. Okay, cool. This is where Final Fantasy IV started. Persona, 14. All right, what are the other games? I already talked about all that stuff. Ori! I played through Ori in the Blind Forest uh, almost entirely while I was in Indianapolis at Gen Con. I played it on the Steam Deck. It's a game that I finally got around to playing because of the Steam Deck. And I'm probably going to be ostracized for this. I thought it was just okay. The visuals and the music, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the game itself, from like a gameplay and a story perspective, it was alright. It was good. It felt good. Um, I don't think it was anything particularly outstanding, though. But the music and visuals, absolutely top-notch. 12 minutes. I think I authentically played it for like 12 minutes and then stopped. I don't- I tried playing it again a couple weeks ago. And like, I just for the life of me cannot get into that game. For whatever reason, the way they're doing their time loop and puzzle solving is not working for me. I think I also just don't like the voice acting. I don't like the voice acting like a tremendous amount, and that game is largely watching this acting happen, and I don't believe it. Which I think is severely hampering my ability to get into the game. Stray. Stray was very cute. I do not understand it winning Indie of the Year at the Game Awards. It's a very good game. I don't think it particularly stands out. It, they did cats really well. Like, man, yeah, this, 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 they, these cats are acting like cats. I don't think the game itself did a lot that was terribly interesting outside of that. And the reason it became a big thing was because the marketing was behind it. It was the only indie game that a lot of people knew about, honestly. But, like, there was a lot of good indie games last year. There was a ton of good indie games last year. They just couldn't break through the noise. Uh, Superland. It's the guy that did Not Prawn. Do you know Not Prawn? I've been thinking about making a video on Not Prawn. It's a very early internet puzzle-solving extravaganza thing that uses puzzles phenomenally well. Superland is an adventure game that has some action elements, but mostly is also a puzzle game. I think it won't work for a lot of people. Uh, the humor generally works pretty well. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Uh, there's no, like, phenomenal storytelling happening here. It's all very tongue-in-cheek. Uh, and most of the jokes work. Some of it didn't survive the translation from, like, German to English. But I enjoy it a lot. I played the initial, and then this is the sequel to it. Six Inches Under is the is the sequel. I 100%ed it. I like it a lot. Uh, it's also a very particular-to-me game, I feel like. Final Fantasy IV. Gundam Evolution started, baby! Final Fantasy XIV. I play too many Forever games. It's a problem. Th with all the time that I put into fourteen and Evolution, these games that never end, that have no finite stories... I could have cleared out so much of my backlog of actual finite games that are like 10 hour experiences. I could have demolished those. Oh, Will, A Wonderful World. Um, interesting. It's a visual novel game that was recommended to me by someone. Interesting concept. Boy, the some of the stuff that they take a swing on, there sure is a lot of stuff in it that is just intensely shocking and disturbing and they did not need to have it in there and it felt like they were just like yeah this makes it dramatic it's like this makes it like really disturbing a lot of intensely uncomfortable scenarios and it swings the gamut from just like these very very like sweet and wholesome scenes to just like actually like really really disturbing like intensely distressing scenes and I, I I don't know that any of it's done particularly well I 100%ed it because I have a problem but uh, I don't think I could recommend it to people honestly a lot of games oh my god oh that's when I started Slay the Spire love Slay the Spire this is when I started man I started a lot of indies I think I went back to Ori here to do some 100% stuff uh, I haven't done like the speedruns or anything in it but I went back and, like, did, like... I think I picked... I, I went back for a couple minutes, I think. Uh, oh, God. I forgot about some of these. Slay the Spire. Phenomenally fun, well-made, deck-building roguelike. Uh, super good. Super good stuff. Uh, I like it a lot. I don't think I need to sing its praises as much. Very, very good way to kill time. 
uh, it's also a forever game that I could play endlessly if I let myself. But there's too many other things to play. Unsighted. Really like the start of it. Um, then I got busy and I did not keep going. I liked it. I need to keep playing it. Whole idea of Unsighted. Everybody in the world has like a time limit ticking down. Uh, every NPC. Including the one that's like your companion, your Navi, like fairy companion from Zelda. They've also got like a clock ticking down. And basically everybody is machines and there's this virus. And when their time runs out, they turn into like hostile machines. I didn't play long enough for that to happen with anybody. But some people are like very low on time. And you can give them time, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it's a very interesting concept for world building. I need to play more of it. It plays side-scrolling Metroidvania style. Actually, yeah, that's one of the Metroidvanias. I did play a good amount of Metroidvanias, actually, now that I think about it. Paradise Killer! Paradise Killer slaps! Okay, first person, visual novel style, you're solving. Like, there, it's a, it's a murder-solving game. Super heavily stylized. Uh, low budget, but they did, like, a lot with that budget. The music is phenomenal. The visuals are, like, really interesting. A lot of the characters are very good. It's very well written. It's very weirdly written. Uh... Like, it has a very strong tone to it. That tone might put some people off, uh, but like, man, uh, just a good, I, I, I really enjoyed my time with it. That's another game I 100%ed. I just really enjoyed moving around it. It didn't take that long either. It's not a terribly long game. I really hope that they do more in that vein. I hope that studio keeps making games like that. This doesn't feel like Phoenix Wright, but it has a lot of similar gameplay stuff to it. So if Phoenix Wright tickles your brain gameplay wise in the right ways, uh, You'll probably like Paradise Killer. I like it quite a bit. Balan Wonderworld. I had to know. I could have spent that time playing so many other things. But I played Balan Wonderworld all the way through. It is bad. It's mostly bad in the way where it feels like they didn't get to finish it. There's a lot of stuff in there that, like, is working. But most of the levels, it just kind of feels like they threw a thing together and they didn't really figure out what the point of the level was, and it just gets kind of collect a -thon -y. A lot of them are just open areas, and they aren't particularly interesting. It sure took up a lot of my time. And I don't know that I got anything back for it. Disco Elysium! Oh god, I played it that late that year? Disco Elysium, again, whole hard recommendation. I played it entirely in November. I think I played... I think I did my whole playthrough over like a week. It hit that part of my brain where I was like, oh no, this is gonna be an obsession. This is bad. <laughs> I want to do more playthroughs because it is so phenomenally open. It uses tabletop style stuff. It's it's definitely not D&D, but it uses stat building and then rolls for success on things. Um, it's very tabletop inspired. Uh, but what if your tabletop was uh, entirely political intrigue and conversation and persuasion and uh, very rarely combat? There is some combat. Intense game. I incredible. I genuinely, everything that they do, the, the world building is so rich, the character building is so rich, there's so many ideas in it, and they're all, like, very well fleshed out. This is one of the games that, like, actually deals with heavy concepts, and actually, like, uses them right. Like, it's no Bioshock Infinite, I guess is the best way I can put it. It brings up, like, all this, like, fairly, like, heavy philosophical material, and actually uses it. It's all actually pertinent to what is going on. At the heart of it, I would say that it's just very largely about the way that we form ideology. You can make your mindset so many different things. You can go so many different directions uh, in this game. And it definitely has a point of view on those things. Like I said, I want to do more playthroughs where I just do like entirely different things and play as an entirely different kind of person. Um, there's so much going on there. It uses it all super well. Just a tremendous achievement, like genuinely. Like I think one of my favorite games of all time, honestly. Phenomenal game. All right, what else is in here? Oh, I started doing Valkyria Chronicles again. I, I've been on and off playing this game for years. I adore it. Uh, honestly, Valkyria Chronicles, super, super well done. Uh, interesting take on a strategy game where it actually like takes like 3D space into account, lines of fire, cover, synergy between units. It, it, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. Absolutely adore it. And also, the writing is actually way better than I expected it would be. I still wouldn't say this is, like, a tremendous achievement in storytelling, but, like, the characters are all pretty engaging, the twists are actually really good, like, 
it's a well-written game. I, I like the story, like, a lot. Uh, compared to something like Fire Emblem or Advance Wars, where the writing is, uh, not really the reason to play the games. I think that Valkyria Chronicles is actually worth playing for the story. Uh, and the gameplay is also stellar. Absolutely love Valkyria Chronicles. I'm, like, at the end of it now. I think I have, like, two chapters left. Uh, so I'm very close to actually finishing it. Because, yeah, I, I've just been slowly playing it over time. For some reason. I don't know why I don't, like, mainline it. For some reason, it's a game that, like, I can't play a ton of in a row. I, I have, like, times where I just really crave Valkyria Chronicles. And then I play it. And I love it. And then I want to play something else. Uh, this is The Police. Played it for a little bit. Um... I fell off it, honestly. I, I get the story it's trying to tell about, like, kind of corrupt law enforcement. And while I uh, am pretty sure I agree with, like, all the stuff they're trying to say, I don't think the way it's written is very effective for me. Felt fairly ham-fisted, and then the gameplay wasn't capturing me as much either. I just didn't feel engaged, I think is really it. I played, like, an hour or two and then just kind of fell off. Maybe it gets really good and I missed out. Who knows? Uh... But I just I didn't feel like I was getting much out of it. Moonlighter I also bounced off of, and I don't know why. On paper, a lot of the stuff in Moonlighter is my kind of thing. It's very similar to a lot of the games that I've been singing the praises of in this list. I might have just not been in the mood for it in November. I should pick it back up again. I played, again, an hour or two of it, and I just kind of bounced off and played other stuff instead. Dragon Quest XI, I booted up to see if it would run on my Steam Deck. It does. It also drains that battery real fast. I think it's going to have to be a uh, computer game as opposed to a Steam Deck game. Just because I think I can only play it for like an hour at a time on Steam Deck. I love Dragon Quest though. I've only heard good things about Eleven from everybody I know who has similar taste. I'm pretty sure what will happen is very similar to Persona 4. I will find a period of time where I just play like three hours of Dragon Quest a day at least. And that's basically it. And it's all I'm playing for like a month. And I'll put like a hundred hours into it. And I'll love it. And, uh, yeah, that'll be when I play Dragon Quest. More Wildermyth, I played another campaign at that time. Death Store, there's another Metroidvania. I like Death Store a whole lot. Death Store, very good game. The action is very good. Uh, a lot of the secrets are really well hidden and interesting. Uh, the writing is, is, is funny. Um, I wouldn't say, again, the plot is, like, anything stellar. But it's serviceable, and the characters are enjoyable. Uh, everything about Death Store, I think, works really well. I enjoy it a lot. Tunic, there we go. Okay, here's the thing. Tunic is phenomenal. Tunic is also one of my favorite games of all time. I'm still working on, like, some of the final puzzles and all that, but that's the fun thing. It's like, I'm not looking it up. I am genuinely... Go I literally have... scratch paper... from puzzles that I was working on in Tunic. Do you know how much I love feeling that again? I adore puzzle games, where you actually have to, like, really put the effort in, and Tunic has, like, a lot of that... Uh, and I'm choosing to go, like, the full, like, analog route, not looking anything up, not asking for any help from anyone. Like, I've just been roughing it all out on paper, and, like, I'm a good way there with the secrets. There's still some stuff for me to find, and I haven't deciphered the language yet. I just did the stuff to... There's a language in the game, and it's not a simple 26-letter, like, cipher where, like, oh, this symbol means this. Um, I loved solving the cipher in Fez. This doesn't work that way. Uh, I recently completed enough stuff to get, like, the Rosetta Stone for the language, so I need to then, like, decipher the language off of that. Uh, and I think once I do that, everything else is going to be open to me, because you have, like, this, uh, you have a manual. Like, that's, that's a, the, like, it's a Super Nintendo-style manual, and it's so cool, and most of it is written in the secret language, and then some of it's in English, so they can get, like, the actual stuff that you need to know. They very, very cleverly give you just enough information for you to figure out the stuff that you need to actually play through the game and, like, get to the end. Then all the secret stuff is, like, behind, uh, deciphering this language or figuring out other coded things, and it goes so deep and I adore it, and I am very happy that months later I'm still picking it up every now and then and, like, solving more puzzles, and, I, I, man, I, I adore Tunic. So the point is, Stray is a very good game. Tunic and Death Store also came out that year, as well as so many other indies that I would say genuinely did, like, absolutely stellar things. And I don't want to shit on it. I liked Stray a lot. I enjoyed playing it for the five or six hours that I played it. Like, I liked playing it a lot. I guess I'm mostly just disappointed in the way that it feels like games coverage 
only focuses on a couple things, and then like everything else gets gets pushed to the side, and it doesn't feel like the things that are being elevated are being elevated due to their quality, but basically just based on marketing budgets or their ability to go viral, which isn't the fault of journalists, it's just it's a microcosm of a lot of things. But it makes me sad, there's a lot of really, really cool games that just kind of slip under the radar. Baldur's Gate 3. Very excited for it to actually, like, officially release later this year. Uh, I've done three runs with friends at this point. One at the very, very beginning, where we didn't go terribly far. Uh, one in December, right here, uh, where we played through to the end of the stuff that's available in early access. Then we're doing another one uh, right now. The last update before official release came out and they added Paladins. So we're doing an, a four Paladin run. Me and my friends are just, we're all Paladins. Uh, and that's been a lot of fun. Paladin's like one of my favorite classes. So yeah. Baldur's Gate 3, very well done. I'm extremely excited for it to actually be finished. Nobody Saves the World, another indie game that came out last year. It's okay. I don't know, like the jokes didn't work for me as much. It's another one of those games where, yeah, like the story isn't supposed to be anything serious. Uh, it's supposed to be very tongue-in-cheek. And some of the jokes work, not all of them do. Uh, the gameplay was just very repetitive to me, I guess. The gimmick is you take the form, you, you get all these different forms and they have different attacks and abilities, and so you're swapping between all these different uh, things and you're customizing their movesets and stuff. So there's a lot of variety in like that sense, but they don't feel that different to me and you're just spending most of the game shooting waves of enemies and getting through stuff and it just felt very repetitive and I just, it was good. I don't think I took a, a lot away from my time with it. So I think that's all the games they're going to tell me about. Uh, Playtime, 72% on Windows, 28% on Steam Deck. Uh, I think a lot of that was because all of my 14 and Gundam Evolution time is on Windows. Uh, I And also, I got the Steam Deck halfway through the year. I'm betting this is going to be closer to a 50-50 uh, for 2023. All right, is there anything on here that I didn't talk about? No. Oh, please touch the artwork. That's fun. I, I literally boot it up every now and then, like, to kill a little bit of time. It's just a very fun, interactive puzzle game. Uh, I do it on the Steam Deck, because you can do, like, touch controls uh, for it and everything. Um, it's fun. It's cute. Timberborn! Timberborn? Okay, it's a, it's a city builder. You're beavers. And so it's very much built around controlling the flow of water, building dams. The rainy season will flood things. The dry season will... Uh, dry things up. You have to keep crops going. You're, you're sentient beaver society. It's it's very cute. I do like it a lot. I haven't gone deep into it because it asks for a lot of time and I have not given it enough time yet. All right, let's move over to Nintendo. Okay, well, uh, actually, apparently after looking for it, they have taken that stuff down. I don't know why they don't leave it permanently. What is it? What is it? What does it hurt them to, to, to leave that stuff up? You know, that's unfortunate. Okay. Here's what I played on my Switch uh, last year, which I had to get up by, I had to figure out by looking at my, at my Switch. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles I played early last year. So good. I'm a huge, huge Phoenix Wright fan, uh, but there was a period of time where the games were like a little, a little rough. Apollo Justice era, a couple after that, uh, weren't great. Uh, but then Dual Destinies, I think it was, was phenomenal. And then Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, unbelievably good, genuinely massive like revitalization for the series for me like absolutely on top of their game writing is funny s stuff is uh interesting uh, all the cases are like really interesting to figure out uh really interesting twists on uh on the formula like very very good and the music is incredible it's always incredible but like the the ob objection theme and stuff that they went with for this game is incredible the instrumentation like combining uh kind of the vibe you're used to with Phoenix Wright with uh, more traditional Japanese instrumentation. It's so good. I also played Pokemon Legends Arceus and it's the first time I've cared about Pokemon in a very long time. I basically 100%ed it. I collected every Pokemon. I, I, I liked that game a whole lot. I haven't cared about Pokemon in a long time. Uh, I would still play them because family would still get them for me and like I would, they'd be fine. But I always felt like I was just kind of eating popcorn as opposed to, like, really sinking my teeth into a game. I liked a lot of the changes with Arceus. I haven't played Scarlet and Violet. Maybe I'll get around to it. I don't know. Um, but I'm happy that a Pokemon game actually, like, worked for me again. Uh, when it hasn't worked for me that well since, like, second gen or Coliseum or those second gen remakes. Um, yeah. 
Okay, the other big thing I played, and this is Christmas 2021 spilling over into New Year 2022. I want to include it. I mentioned it a bit earlier. Moon RPG. Phenomenal game. It's a PlayStation 1 game, uh, and it heavily inspired Undertale. Uh, and because of Undertale's success and Toby Fox mentioning it as an inspiration, it finally got brought over to the West, like, a couple years ago. Um, it had been Japan only up to that point. And it is, like, it's an adventure puzzle-solving game with an interesting time limit twist on it. Uh, and I don't want to spoil too much, but it, it's like an anti-RPG is what they is what they called it. It does a lot of really interesting stuff that was super ahead of its time. And I think some of it is a little more outdated when it comes to some of the concepts and themes that it works with. Uh, but for the time, it was phenomenal, and it still works really well now. The main thrust of the gameplay is solving kind of environmental world puzzles to uh, kind of save some people's souls. And it does it, like, tremendously well. It has some puzzles that, like, when you figure it out, like, you feel so good about it. It's really tough to, like, get everybody in the game and get, like, the best ending. It's, it's tough. But it's got a phenomenal soundtrack. It's got a ton of charm. The visuals are really interesting. I do think it's possible it won't work for everybody. It's got some of that, like, classic PlayStation 1 jank to it. It can be frustrating if you were easily turned off of games. I do not think in any way it is a game for everybody, but if you're the kind of person who is very interested in games that are trying, like, very different things narratively or gameplay-wise, it's really, really good uh, in that respect. And I, I'm very happy that I played it. And it's a game that I developed, like, an emotional attachment to. Through, through playing it, uh, and I have a lot of thoughts about it. And I've been wanting to make a video about it, and I should, that's, that's, that's going on the list, actually. I played The World Ends With You Final Remix. Uh, I did not play all the way through it. Uh, I think I just burned out on it a, a little bit. I loved the original, and I probably will go back and play through this, but I'm playing the sequel right now, and I'm actually, I'm hooked in the sequel right now. Like, literally, as, as I'm recording this, I've put like 24 hours in over the course of like four days. I've been doing like six hour sessions at night in Discord, streaming it to my friends, and I'm only playing it there. If I wasn't streaming it to them, I probably would be playing it like non-stop right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm doing good work-life balance, and I'm still getting other things done with my day, uh, instead of just spending the entire thing uh, s s slaving away at a video game in my underwear. Uh, doing pretty well for myself. Final Remix, uh, it's missing some of the stuff that made the original very fun. It, it can't do the two screen thing, because how would you? But as far as adapting it to like a single screen game, I think they did basically what you could. It's a very good adaptation, I was enjoying it. Uh, I think for some reason I just stopped playing it and then I never got back into it. I think a lot of it honestly was Joy-Con Drift. Everybody knows the controllers like have a tendency to get bad, and it's a bad game to have Joy-Con Drift on. I think that's what was happening. But I have new controllers now, uh, and I have a pro controller. I should I should get back to playing it. What if I'm playing that like during the day, and then I'm playing the sequel at night? I love The World Ends With You. It's such a fun, weird thing to exist. Oh, Splatoon 3! Splatoon 3! It's Splatoon. I like it a lot. Uh, finding time to play it, because it is... A forever game. It's another forever game. Uh, finding time to play it is difficult, but I enjoy it when I pick it up. It's Splatoon. It's a, an improvement over the last two. Uh, it's Splatoon. I also played the new Mario Kart 8 tracks uh, that they've been adding, and I, I don't like the tour tracks they've been adding. I played uh, at Christmas. I played a, a ton with Miles and Ame. I was over at their place. Uh, and so, hey, the end of 2022. It counts. Um, I really like the new, new tracks that they added and some of the ones they brought back from older games. Not a huge fan of the tour tracks. Uh, Mario Kart 8, it's the perfect Mario Kart. There, there's a reason why, instead of making a new one for the Switch, they remastered uh, the one for the Wii U and added more stuff to it. They, they figured it out. They did it. They made good Mario Kart. And then Animal Crossing. I, I still am doing Animal Crossing every now and then. I've got over 345 hours so far, according to my Switch. Which, you know pandemic stuff, but I keep going back into it to get the last uh, fish and insects and stuff that I've been missing. I'm, I have all the fish and insects and fossils done. It's just some art and then sea creatures. It's like one sea creature I still need. But I go months and months without playing it and then I'll come back and 
yeah, I'm not playing it every day the way that I was in early pandemic, but it's still just fun to go back to every now and then. I like Animal Crossing. I think it's generally what the Switch has been for me. It's been a lot of just kind of comfort games. I have so many things though. I still need to play Astral Chain. I still need to play Metroid Dread. I still need to play Xenoblade 3. I have a lot that I need to play on the Switch. So maybe I'll start... Maybe I'll switch to doing the Switch on the subway again instead of the Steam Deck. There's so many games out there to play, guys. So that uh, is like exhaustive coverage of what I played last year. I think there's a couple things. I played through the Uncharted series on the PlayStation 4 uh, last year. I played through 1 through 4. They're okay. <laughs> I like them enough. They were fun to play through. Uh, I, they didn't grip me nearly as much as like The Last of Us. You know, stuff like that. I, I think they were a bigger deal when they first came out because it hadn't been done yet. But now there's a lot of things that try to do what Uncharted did. So... The series just isn't as, like, as exciting of a bold new thing. Like, the idea of being able to play an action movie. Uh, it's not as new of a thing as it was back when they first came out. So, it happens. But yeah, that's pretty exhaustive coverage of everything I played last year. Mostly on Steam, but that's where most of my gaming is uh, these days. Um, Valve got me. They did it. It was fun to reminisce. Remember a couple things that I forgot I had played and some that, like, I really need to pick back up again. Uh, and just kind of talk about some things that I probably wouldn't talk about on the channel otherwise. Games that I do have thoughts on, but like not enough to like justify doing a video or anything big. Hopefully I spotlighted a couple indies that might be interesting to you guys uh, that you might want to pick up. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm getting back into the groove of things now. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll see you again fairly soon. I don't know. I've got a couple other light, easy videos to make that, uh, that I want to try and do soon. Um, so yeah. Uh, see you guys later.